Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video I'm going to explore Strahd and take a deep dive into his character development. But there is a twist. I'm going to frame him as a tragic hero. Strahd as a character sees himself as a tragic hero and not a cold-hearted villain. In his opinion, he was a victim of circumstance. He believed what he was doing was right and none of the horror that came of it was his fault. So for people who do not know who Strahd is, he is one of the most famous villains in Dungeons and Dragons and the campaign based on him is the Curse of Strahd. Strahd is a vampire who lives in the quaint mountain valley of Barovia. Well, it was until Strahd made a pact with the Dark Powers and it got sucked into a demi-plane of dread in the Shallowfell. Neither Strahd nor the residents of Barovia can leave as a deadly fog engulfs the outer boundaries of the valley. The only people who can come and go are the Vistani. The Vistani are travelling people who wander through the mist of the Shadowfell. Strahd uses a Vistani to bring travellers to Barovia when he grows tired of tormenting the locals. Strahd's relationship with the Vistani goes back to when they healed him during a war or campaign he fought in. Because they never ask for anything in return, he allows them to enter and leave Barovia at their will. When players encounter Strahd, he is devoid of all emotion. He accepts that he is evil and has sold his soul to get what he wants, which is immortality. Being a vampire has slowly eroded away anything that makes him remotely human, and he considers himself better than the living. The only traumatic event that haunts him is the death of his beloved Tatiana. Strahd is a master manipulator, so when people encounter him, he can be very charming, which disarms them. However, he always looks weakness within a party, and when he spots it, you can bet he's going to exploit it. But what has made Strahd this tragic yet master manipulator and formidable monster? Well, the story circle plot embryo can help untangle the circumstances that set him on this course. So if we begin in a zone of comfort, Strahd is a privileged prince and soldier who conquers lands and realms far and wide. This ultimately brings him to the mountainous valley he calls Barovia. He looked up to his father, King Borov, whom he named the valley after. His family's fearsome reputation is important to him. And because he is battle-hardened, he comes across as arrogant, cold and unforgiving. But while he is content with waging wars against his family's enemies, there is something he desires. Otherwise, the prospect of change wouldn't be tempting. Strahd wants his mother, Queen Ravenovia, to love him like his brother Sergei. However, after the death of King Borov, she has grown more fearful of Strahd and has prioritised keeping Sergei away from him. She fears he will become like Strahd if he gets too close to him. Strahd is aware of this, and this makes him envious of his brother. So, we've established what Strahd desires, which I'd say is a deeper connection to someone other than his ego. Now, he enters an unfamiliar situation to achieve what he desires. He understands in order that to find someone to love, he has to settle down. So Strahd chooses to stay in Barovia. Military campaign-driven Strahd is no more, or so we think. However, the lack of violence and gore makes him restless, and he begins to reflect on his own mortality bringing up thoughts of his father's death. He begins to study magic so that he can live forever. He forges a pact with the dark powers of the Shadowfell. Next, we have adapting to the situation. So Strahd has accepted that Barovia is going to be his permanent home, and he searches for artisans and craftsmen to help him build a magnificent castle, fit for the prince he is. He calls the castle Ravenloft as a tribute to his mother. He invites or commands Sergei and his mother, Queen Ravenovia, to come and live in the castle. En route to the castle though, Queen Ravenovia dies, which leaves Strahd devastated. In his grief, he buries in the crypt beneath the castle, instead of returning her body to their ancestral homeland. Reinforcing his decision to stay in Barovia, his brother Sergei now moves in with him. For a brief moment, Strahd gets what he wants, or thinks he does. Strahd finally encounters someone in Barovia whom he can love and think can fill his emotional void and make him complete. This person is Tatiana, and she is incredibly beautiful. Strahd is very much attracted to her, and showers her with gifts. He very much believes he has a future with Tatiana, and sees her as a way of furthering his family's legacy, and more importantly, providing him with a suitable heir. Later, he pays a price for it. Tatiana instead falls in love with Sergei, Strahd's nicer and well-adjusted brother. This crushes Strahd and dashes his hopes of furthering his family's bloodline. He's infuriated and thinks Sergei has stolen Tatiana away from him like he did their mother. Strahd's cruel and evil streak gets the better of him, and the night of the wedding, Strahd murders his brother and drinks his blood, sealing his fate with the dark powers. 
He pursues Tatiana, but she is so horrified by him, she runs away and hurls herself off a balcony, choosing death over him. Strahd's guards retaliate and try to kill Strahd, but he does not die. Instead, he turns into a vampire. After killing the guards, Strahd sees his mother and father in the clouds, disapprovingly judging him for destroying their family, and more importantly, the von Zarevich reputation and legacy. At this point, he feels he has lost everything. Next, Strahd returns to a familiar situation. Strahd returns to his seat at Ravenloft, which is sucked into the demiplane, along with the rest of Barovia, on account of his pact with the Dark Powers. Here, Strahd continues ruling over the residents of Barovia, much as he had done in a previous life as a conqueror and privileged prince. Finally, Strahd has changed as a result of the journey. Strahd is unable to come to terms with everything he has lost, especially Tatiana. He tries to recreate the relationship he desires with her, but it's never the same. Recently, he has taken a shine to Irina Collin, believing her to be a reincarnation of Tatiana. His old urges to conquer and kill are only placated by fleeting cat and mouse moments with visitors entering Barovia. All the joy he takes from corrupting others into vampire spawn. He longs to be released and believes finding a worthy tribute or heir to rule over Barovia will set him free. But his own arrogance, pride and lack of compassion are all consuming and prevent him from doing so. Ultimately, these flaws are responsible for Strahd's destruction and damn him for eternity as a vampire. Right, so that's a whistle-stop tour of Strahd's development as a tragic hero. Now I know there is extra lore surrounding his story, but the majority, if not all the resources I used, were from the Curse of Strahd campaign. So, to understand why Strahd is not a tragic hero, but a villain, it's good to know the typical structure of both. To be a tragic hero, a character tends to tick the following boxes. First of all, they're usually a good person, not perfect mind, but on the whole, they have a good moral compass. Did Strahd ever tick this box? I'd say no. They also tend to begin their story doing something good. Definitely not Strahd, as he was busy waging wars. The audience usually cheers for them in some way, likely at the beginning. Were you ever supporting Strahd? Probably not. Most importantly though, what makes a tragic hero, well, tragic, is that one fatal flaw that ultimately engineers their downfall. When this happens, it's called peripatia, or a sudden reversal of fortune. Peripatia does not happen at random, and it's linked to the fatal flaw. In my opinion, Strahd was pretty much all flaw. He had no redeeming qualities. He was always self-motivated, driven by intense jealousy or envy. The punishment a tragic hero receives also sometimes doesn't seem fair. So if you look at the curse of Strahd, one could argue the only characters being punished in this story are the poor Barovians and the restless soul of Tatiana. Strahd, for the most part, is, well, largely unaffected. The only thing he can't do is leave Barovia to go on a conquering campaign. Finally, the hallmark of a tragic hero is that they tend to become self-aware of their actions after their downfall. I say Strahd has learnt and understood how he got into the situation he's in, but I don't think he cares. In fact, he's using his unfortunate set of circumstances to benefit himself. He's not reflecting on why he can never leave Barovia, not really. He's still in the mindset of a spoiled prince and gets delight from having power and control over people. The only thing Strahd has in common with a tragic hero is that neither of them get what they want. For Strahd, this was Tatiana. A villain, in my opinion, however, matches Strahd to a T. A villain is an evil and wicked character that harms others, and they justify their actions according to their own set of principles. So with Strahd, it's all about furthering the von Zarevich name and empire to get what he wants, no matter the cost. He overlaps with an antagonist, but he is not one. He does more than stand in the way of the hero's goals, and is not just a source of conflict. In fact, I'd call him a villain protagonist, because without him, there is no curse of Strahd, and Barovia would have never existed in its current state. But let me know what you think. Right, that's all for today, folks, and I'll see you in the next one.